All right, so the last time we were here, we started to um, create some app assets. I've got a copy of the My SDCE project. We're not working with the template anymore. We, it's, it's already served its purpose. It was a template. Now we're working on the real project, which is what we ended up with last time. And I'm just putting today's date on it. So the My SDC project is the one that we're going to continue to work on. We're going to keep adding to it. Remember, we were using template as sort of a play, a playground and such. We had the camera, which that was just something to play with. But from the network folder, you should see my SDCE 2016-10-11 start. That's our starting point from Tuesday. I copied it to my flash drive and put today's date, and that's what I'm going to work on. What I'm going to work on is I'll go back to that handout, the very last handout that I gave us, um, which is number six. So I'm going to take a look at that again. Number six, we started this, we didn't finish it, which is to... Um, design some app graphics. I don't want to stay with the default Cordova mascot icon. I want something unique. So here what I've got is we were starting to work on our app icons. I'm going to open up Photoshop again and I'm going to show you some other ways that you can create some interesting some interesting graphics without having a lot of experience. So um, I'm going to go start menu and let's open Photoshop 2015. You can use elements if you want. That's the little brother of Photoshop. We're going to use the big brother, Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. Go ahead and launch that. You use Photoshop in most aspects of web or app design because visuals play a part as well as the programming. You might have started something last time. You can open that if you want, but I'm just going to start from the beginning one more time. I've started Photoshop. I'll go up to the File menu, New. We need a new document. The name of the document at the top, I'll set that to Icon-512 px this is going to be our large 512 pixel sized document the width units change those right away to pixels so we had width and height of pixels and does anyone remember what did we go with the width and the height 512 exactly the same as the icon's name so 512 pixels 512 pixels not inches 112 inch graphic doesn't make sense. Did I say anything about resolution? 72 resolution. We don't need super print quality. That's basically what that is. And anything else on this screen? Background. Transparent, or else we would have a white background behind our, behind our icon, which would look really weird. So set your background contents to transparent. So just a quick check again, icon name with height, resolution, and background. I didn't change anything else. And I'll click OK. That'll open up in a moment. I'll have a, a big square with a checker, checkerboard pattern. And um, this is our our uh, empty document. Before I go too far, I want to save this. So notice at the top I'm working on the Icon 512 pixel graphic, but I have not saved it yet. So we'll go to File Menu, Save As. I'm going to save this on my flash drive, but at the moment you don't need to save it into your project folder yet. You can put it anywhere you want, as long as you remember where you saved it so you can retrieve it. I've got a folder where I'm storing all my apps, and I've got a folder for this class. So I'm simply going to save it in that folder. You can put it wherever you want. 
and I'm going to save it as icon512.psd. This is our Photoshop document. It's our work in progress. Photoshop has uh, many powerful features like layers and alpha channels and all of that stuff. And if you save it as anything besides PSD, you will lose some of that editability. If later on I want to make a change to a drop shadow, or I want to change the color, well, if I save it any, as anything besides PSD, I most likely lose that ability. So my work in progress file is PSD. Save that. Maybe you get an item about maximized compatibility, just click OK on that so that this um, version of the file is openable in previous versions. My screen looks a little different than yours, perhaps, but on the right side I see these various panels. In my case, I don't really need them. I'm going to close this panel. Um, well, maybe not. So don't worry about that yet. Um, we had various icons that were built in to Photoshop. If you recall, those are found under the um, rectangle tool near the black arrow there, the, the select selection tool. Uh, click on that little uh, rectangle, click and hold, and then go over to Custom Shapes. Then on the top options bar, it changes to show you're using that shape, particularly that arrow shape. So from from that little drop down, we have some basic shapes, but we've got the, the gear. And I want to select all shapes at once. So tell it to select all shapes and then click OK to replace the current shapes with more shapes. So we did all of this previously, but here's the new stuff. Let's say I was going to. I uh, use this snail icon. Um, I can click and drag on screen to, to draw the snail. It might be better if before drawing I hold shift on the keyboard and then click and drag because then it'll stay in proportion. If I don't hold shift, I can have a very tall uh, snail or a very thick one. But if I want it in proportion, hold down shift, and it should stay in proportion. Undo that. Let's say I'm trying to draw this thing. Okay, I'm going to start from the center. I'm holding shift. Let's say I'm trying to draw it. Whoops, I'm drawing it off the edge of the screen. How do I move it uh, where I want it? Notice as you're drawing, as you're dragging to, to draw it, it started at where you clicked. So if I actually, whoops, I should have started on the top left. This is an advanced thing right here. While I'm still, while I still have my, my hand on the mouse, I've still clicked the button, I haven't let it go. Before I finish drawing, if I hold the space bar and then move my hand, it lets me reposition the starting point of my icon. So you see that I accidentally started it too far off on the corner. I wanted it in the center. Before I let go of the mouse, hold space bar, and then move your hand, and you'll be able to reposition it. Let go of space bar, but not the mouse. My mouse hand is still clicking the mouse. I'm still drawing it. Yes. I was about to say that. Let's say here I still have it in the wrong place. Whoops, I drew it over there somewhere. To select or to move something, it's the very first icon, that, that four-headed arrow right there. If you select that one, it's the Move tool. Then uh, you should be able to move that object. And then the Just hit Delete on the keyboard. Now, if it's not fully doing, if it's not fully deleting what you thought, here's where you may have more than one shape layer. I've drawn one shape layer. There it is. So if you also click it there to select and press delete, it should delete or the little trash can. 
So let's say I did draw more than one snail. Notice my layers panel shows I've got two layers, shape one, shape two. So now if I select one of them and delete, it's only going to select and delete that one that is selected on a layer. And layers are basically like sheets of paper. So in the real world, I have two sheets of paper. I draw something on this sheet and put it on top of this sheet. They're separate. This one doesn't affect that one. Photoshop layers are like that. They're separate elements. So if I've got one sheet of paper deleted, uh, selected, I can delete that one. Then I need to select the other sheet of paper to delete that one. And that's simply clicking. See how it highlights? Click the layer, then you can press delete. And then you can delete them. I've got a bunch of shapes here. Um, maybe I'm going to go with a little butterfly shape. I can choose its color before I draw it or after I draw it, but up on the fill, on the first row of options, this is the fill color, so I have some colors built in. I can also go to gradient colors, patterns, So you see here I've got some basic colors, or I can switch at the top here to gradients, which are colors flowing from one to the other, and I have a lot of customization about the angle of the color and all of that stuff. But let's say I chose one of these gradients, like this chrome-looking color, and then I draw the butterfly. There we go, I've got something instantly interesting. It's a shape, a color. That's found up there under the fill. Let me go to the third icon, gradients. We have some built-in gradients, just like we had some built-in shapes. And next to the gear, we have some other gradients that we can load up. Load gradients. There's different ways to load them up. We'll look at that a little later. There's a few built-in gradients. And then next to it, we've also got uh, patterns. Let's see this weird pattern here. All right, let's take a quick look. Okay, uh, let me switch back to the shape two.
So here, obviously, we've got a lot of um, tricks that we can do. We've got these various shapes and some gradients and colors. But what I'll do is if I, if I draw a shape, there are also some other built-in special effects that I can add to my drawing. Uh, you should probably see a tab or a panel on the right called Styles. If you don't see Styles, you can get it from the Window menu. Window, Styles. And what that is is a bunch of built-in quick styles and effects. Like if I select one of these, now it looks like a little three-dimensional button. Or choose that one with another kind of style to it. So we've got these ones that are built in. And then from the from the menu here, they they this one's a three-line menu instead of a gear. It should be consistent. But if you click this menu under the styles panel, you then have a list of a bunch of other styles. Like we had the shapes. So you go there and say, okay, abstract styles, web styles, dotted strokes, buttons, etc. So if I just randomly select something again, do you want to append, which is add the new styles to the existing styles, or clicking OK will replace the current styles to add the new style, whichever you would like, but I'll just click OK to focus on, on a particular style. Then if you click on one, there you go, now I have a, now I have a uh, puzzle piece inside my shape. You can further refine any of these pre-built styles when you see down here under the layers, these styles are made out of pieces of other effects, and you can edit those effects by double-clicking down there on the layers, on the bottom right. It opens up and it gives you other things that you can further change. So I want to start off with something like that, but then I want to change the color, you know, double-click, go in there, change different items. There's a lot that we can explore. So we have shapes that are built in, we have colors, gradients, styles. So you see you don't have to have a, a lot of experience uh, to create something interesting. You know, it made an amazing icon for my educational app. Um, what I could do is further I can refine the actual shape itself. What if I like this starting point of a shape but I want to change it so that the legs are angled differently or this arm is out longer or something. I can change these shapes. 
Perhaps you see little dotted little dots around the shapes. All of those are control points that I can control. The way we would do that is, well, the move tool is the very first tool at the top, which lets us move the whole thing. But we then have near the custom shape tool, we have this black arrow. That's the path selection tool. And what we're drawing, these, these shapes, they're technically a path. So you may get uh, the, the control points. And inside of the path selection tool, we have direct selection tool. If you click and hold the black arrow down here, you'll get the white arrow, the direct selection tool. What that will let you do is select each individual point that this is made out of. If you click on a shape, the points appear. Then I can click on a shape control point and do that. So there we go. That's, I think that was a scene on Terminator 2. <laughs> um, you know, I can mess with these things, and I started off with an with with an existing shape, and then I can go in and, and refine it. Now, sometimes you're, you're trying to make a change, and the whole thing changes. Well, that's because all the dots are selected; they're all black. A black dot means it's been selected. They've all been selected. So to only select one, I would first click elsewhere to deselect. Then I would click on the shape. See how now they're all white. None have been selected. So then I can click on one control point and change only that one control point. Click on that one, and I'll move this one. Now obviously, I'm thinking in terms of a real arm, but I have to move it point by point. So if I wanted to make that arm pointing upward, I have to move each one of the individual points like this. click off the shape to deselect, and then I click on the shape to select to make the points visible. Then I click on a point which I can then move, push and pull. I can even delete a point, and it'll get very weird. I don't recommend you delete your points, because something weird might happen like that. But we've got the path selection tool. The black arrow moves the whole thing. The white arrow direct selection. We can uh, change individual elements. And now about, well, that edge is too hard. How can you round it? That's a little more complex than I want to talk about. But uh, we can move around these, these little points. So building a shape plus adding a style or a color and such lets you... How can you copy what? You should be able to, if I select it, here's the shape, it's selected, I'll go up to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste, it copies on top of itself, so you might not have seen it, but then when I move it, then I see the, the other one. Now maybe an even faster way to make copies of a layer. It's somewhere in the menu, but I remember it with Control J. That will quickly create a copy of a layer. That might be better than copy paste. Just Control J. That automatically copies a layer, which then you just move, and you've got your copy. The difference here is that copy and paste seemed to have kept it on the same layer. But Control J, which I usually use, separates them to different layers. So we have this whole 512 canvas to work with. Um, what I often see is that students, uh, you know, set up a shape and
you have only something like that. Well, we're working on the large size canvas. Eventually this will be shrunk down to the size of your little phone screen. So here I have a lot of wasted space in my icon. I have all of this empty space all over the place. So try to make your content fill the canvas as much as possible. I drew this and I like it, but it's too small. So what you can do is go up to Edit Menu um, with your layer selected, Edit Free Transform. Control T, Free Transform. That will let you grab a corner and pull that out. Again, if you hold Shift, it'll stay in proportion because right here I might be making them too tall. I want to hold shift on the keyboard while I drag the corner and then it stays in proportion. So I can drag one of these control points in the corner to resize it. And you'll grab an edge to, to pull that out. When I'm on one of these free transform control points, I'm going to resize the, the graphic. But if I instead move my mouse, I haven't clicked. If I move my mouse a little bit further away from the actual control point, that means I'm going to rotate it. So clicking on the control point actually resizes it, but outside of the control bounding box, if I click and hold, that will let me rotate it. And I can move it. That central point there is your rotation anchor point. Don't worry about it. But then here, I'm going to set myself up with some rotation and resizing and such. After you've uh, resized and rotated, you want to hit the check mark on the top right corner to commit or to accept your changes. Now I can have simply uh, icons, graphics, something like that. Or I can also have text. So we've got the text tool, it's a little T. Then I have the full range of all my text, all my fonts and such. So I can make a nice um, icon simply by making, uh, by using, by using text. Now here I have two layers, one is my circle shape and one is my kid's shape. I can hide by clicking on the eye, various effects, or the layer itself. So if I will have a, I suddenly got another idea for a different kind of design, I could hide those graphics for the moment. I didn't delete them, I just hid the layers, they still exist. And then I can go over to the text tool, for example, and um, here I have a bunch of fonts so maybe I can make my icon just of one letter of an interesting font. You know, graphic design. Um, that's a valid graphic design thing because what I could do is, you know, my, well, let's see if I just have an S, free transform that. I can make this S as big as. my canvas and on that I can apply styles and such. And if I don't want to start off with the built-in style, down here I can add effects manually. So get another bit of creativity. I've, I've written the letter S and made it really big with free transform. And then I can go to FX. And all of those styles that are in the style panel are based off of these individual effects. So if I want to just add a drop shadow here, here we go. I have 
a million little um, sub options that I can choose to make this drop shadow. Let me give you a few minutes to kind of experiment with this stuff. Call me over if you, if you need any help. Just play with this for a little bit. Uh, then uh, I'll show you another cool way to make some interesting Photoshop icons. But just experiment with some of this stuff. Shapes, styles, effects, uh, text.
Remember to save your work once in a while so you can hit Control S to save. And a couple more minutes and I'll show you some other ways we can use Photoshop to make some of these icons. The effect on the S or the S itself? The S itself was a font, and the font is Postino Standard Italic. It's just the letter S in that font. Really big. Okay, so I've got here an icon that I kind of like, um, but I'll show you one more way that you can create icons. I'm going to save what I have here, and then go ahead and go to your web browser. Go to your web browser, and you've probably seen 
or you've probably typed those little emoji characters on your smartphone. You send someone a little face with little hearts for eyes, or you send a little thumbs up icon, or you send a little poop with eyeballs and all of that. The emoji. You can use emoji um, in these projects. And there's a version, every device has a version. I've got an Android phone at the moment here, and its icons look a little different than the iPhone version, which look a little different than the Windows version, which looks a little different than the Twitter version. Well, they all come from the original emoji specification. And there's a version of it that is free and open source and really well designed that you can use in Photoshop. So if you go over to emoji1.com, E M O G I O N E, emoji1, this is the open source emoji library. There's the version that, that Apple created, which it's proprietary to them. They created that one. Then there's the Android version, the Windows version, Twitter version. But then there's Emoji One, and this organization wants to have, you know, these free universal versions of the emoji icons. They're slightly different than the really famous ones that are honestly the Apple ones. Apple made emoji so famous, but not everyone sees the same uh, icon when you use the emoji. So here under Emoji One, you know, here's all the icons. So that's how that looks, and there's a little money tongue character. All of these are downloadable, full high quality vector graphics. So if you know a little bit more advanced Photoshop, we can use any one of these. I can, you know, download little Santa Claus icon or the inspector icon. The way you do that is you click, and then it asks, and here it is, the the 512 pixel ping version or download the SVG, the vector version with even higher quality. What I'm saying with this is if I like that icon, I can click to download it. It'll open up there. I'll need to save image. I can save it on the desktop or whatever. And then in Photoshop, I can open it I downloaded it to my desktop and then I can open it right there. So I got that icon in Photoshop and I can do a few changes to it. The uh, SVG version of the download is the much more powerful one. Let's say I wanted the see if there's any good educational ones. And then there's lots more here that I can open up from another screen. But let's say this uh, briefcase, download the SVG version. Right click to save the SVG version and then I can open it in Photoshop. I'm going to open it in Photoshop. It asks for what size. Again, we would go with the size that I've said before. 512. So we won't spend a lot of time on this, but here's another spot where you can um, you can go to emoji1.com, find that icon. All of those icons are okay for you to use because it's open source. They've, they've put it out there for you to use, for you to license. You're not bound by the, the constraints.
can go look at them also if you've got that menu on the top left like me I can click that and go to developers and that's how you can also view them in a different way the larger collection over developers you can download every one of them at once black and white versions a font version the emoji gallery So that opens up another world of possibilities. I could use one of these icons that's been very well drawn, and then I can edit it a little bit. So I'll just uh, lead you that far. Uh, we're going to take a break. It's about 7.10. We'll be back at 7.20, and we will do, well, hopefully you've got some kind of graphic. Let's follow then along with the rest of the handout so that then we actually, I'll show you how to save the graphics as these required sizes and what to do with them. So we'll take a break until 7.20, make a nice icon, hopefully. Um, and then I'll show you how to output it so that we can put it into our, into our, uh, into our app.